1961, Sam James started Grace Baptist Mission in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Within a year, the church was renamed Homestead Heights Baptist Church. They grew to over 150 members, and they continued to grow through the 1980s and even into the 1990s, and they had a great idea. Homestead Heights is going to build a new building that can hold over 600 people. They briefly exceeded capacity, but in the 1990s saw little growth and declined to a stable 400 in membership. But in 2002, they said, you know, we believe God wants us to reach all of Raleigh-Durham. So they called a new pastor. It was their college pastor, actually. He'd already worked at the church, and he had gone to the mission field. They called him to return home from the mission field. His name was J.D. Greer. His wife and I, him, knew that they were called to Homestead Heights Baptist Church because they, too, had a desire and a vision to reach that community for Jesus. Shortly after his arrival, they changed the name to Summit Church, and Summit Church became, in the Southern Baptist Convention, one of the greatest sending churches in all of our congregations, sending more missionaries and more church planters than ever before. In 2020, weekly attendance was over 11,000 people on 12 campuses. This is an incredible story of God moving in the life of a church. It's an incredible story of vision. It's an incredible story of a church willing to do whatever it takes to reach people for the gospel. Larry Osborne writes a book called Sticky Church, and in it he says the ultimate measure of our ministry and stewardship will not be found in how many people we can pack into our churches on a weekend. It will be measured by what those people did once they left the building. On the screen you'll see this. Jesus' measure of the church is not our seating capacity, it is our sending capacity. John 12, 24, Jesus says these very words, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. This is the heart of Christ that we not be a holy huddle or gather as many as we can, but that we would gather here and be about his mission and reaching the lost for Christ. The Great Depression is a time in our country where we experienced jobs dried up, the ground even dried up due to poor farming techniques, and even drought. This was the 1920s. Many of you weren't even there, but you know of how it went. Many families had to make a decision of whether they were going to grind their seed for bread or take that seed and plant it in the ground and hope that something would grow. You see, seeds, once they're planted in the ground, you can no longer consume them. And so there's risk. There's risk involved in, in planting seed. Many people planted in faith. They planted hoping that something would happen, that rain would come. And do you know that in 1939, it rained? This morning, I'm entitling our fall sermon series, Our Namesake, Green Acres Baptist Church. That's the title of the series. It's a four-sermon series, a four-part series, where I will hone in to each word of our name and so this morning is green green would you pray with me father help us this morning attune our hearts to you this is your church this is your bride it is your mission 
Help us. Help us, we pray. Be in tune to what you are doing and say yes. So, Father, we need your help. It is only something that can be done by your Spirit. And this is what I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Healthy things are green. Green means go. Green means grow. Now, whether you're referring to the nine marks of a healthy church, which I read quite often, Mark Dever, he talks about expository preaching and biblical theology, the gospel, conversion, evangelism, church membership, church discipline, discipleship and growth, biblical church leadership, or whether you're referring to Jeff Vanderstelt, where a church is made up of multiple missional community groups, discipleship happens in smaller groups, it happens one-on-one, -on -one, you know, three ladies and three guys, and we're all being discipled as we're on mission together, however you want to phrase it. This is the question that arises in my mind. How do you measure it? How are we doing, Green Acres? Are we green and growing? How can you tell that you're making a difference? How can you tell, are we growing as a church? I mean, counting isn't bad, is it? Shepherds count. Pastors ought to be counting. They count their sheep. They make sure they're all there. I mean, if one goes missing, where'd he go? Oh, he's way over there. And you go get him. Counting's not bad. But if numbering is all we do, then we'll miss the point. A shepherd feeds the sheep. A shepherd gives attention to the sheep. He encourages them to move and takes them to different pasture. You see, there's always been a little bit of a tension between depth and width. Or, as you'll see on the screen, faithfulness and fruitfulness. And maybe you'll find this very same tension in your heart. I hope to work it out. This morning, some would say this. They would say, Pastor, don't worry about numbers. Just bear down and be faithful. To which I say, Amen. God will bring people. But it can also be a cop-out for laziness. It can also be a cop-out for bad theology. Some would say, others would, would say, it's all about the numbers. And they'd care too much about it. They would be accused of pragmatism. They'd be accused of just trusting in church programs or emotionalism and entertainment. You'd go to a church like that and you'd find that people aren't there for Jesus. They're really there to be seen or they're there to not be seen, if you know what I mean. Or they're there just to kind of get a resource so which is it? Is it faithfulness or fruitfulness? And my answer to that this morning, are we to be deep or wide? I believe it's both. It's both. You see, Jesus was deep. He frequently preached sermons that drove out the casual seekers, telling them that the crowds, unless they hated their fathers and mothers and children in comparison to their commitment to him, they could not be his disciples. Paul, too, would even preach in a similar way, writing to the church that they needed to be deeply grounded in the faith. But we also see Jesus was wide. He and the apostles would pursue explosive wit. They would go after the lost we would see even in the book of Acts, they praised God when 3,000 people were saved in a single day. We see this all through the book of Acts. That's why I'm pausing even in the middle of it so that we wouldn't just kind of keep it up here as a history lesson, but we would even apply it right now. Are we growing, Green Acres? Are we doing what it takes to grow? Are we being faithful and fruitful? We see all through the book of Acts that they counted. They preached to as many 
as would listen. Paul went out, and Paul even said to the Corinthian church, he got on to them for not caring about the seekers in their midst. He gave them instructions to make their worship services accessible. Couldn't get that one out. Accessible to others. We're to be both faithful and fruitful. Both deep and wide. Jared Wilson captures this balance in one of his books as he writes this. It's not always true that healthy things grow bigger. Sometimes healthy things grow smaller and leaner. For example, when I begin to eat better food and work out, right? A little leaner. Sometimes healthy things or unhealthy things grow like cancer. So, more important than measuring a church's size is measuring its health. It's not about our seating capacity, it's about our sending capacity. If you're a follower of Jesus and you're here this morning, the purpose for your life is to gather with God's church for the glory of God and go out and make disciples. It's clear in the Bible. And I'm not, if I'm not sending you out, then I'm not doing my job. Mark Dever would say a healthy church has a pervasive concern with church growth. Growth is a sign of life. Growing trees are living trees. Growing animals are living animals. So when something stops growing, it dies. This uh, past week, I've become fascinated with botany. Anybody a botanist in here? I mean, here we are in UGA. And uh, there's a particular plant they call the resurrection plant. Anybody ever seen a resurrection plant? Or the, I think it's the heart of Jericho. I've got a video for you. Check this out. Pretty incredible, huh? The resurrection plant. Some of them say that they're over a hundred years old and they'll kind of roll like tumbleweeds and they'll find a little bit of water somewhere and those roots will come out and that plant that looked dead with just a little bit of water and nutrients is now green again. Green Acres Baptist Church that is my prayer for us. That is, we would commit ourselves to the main thing, the main things that we would find ourselves faithful and fruitful. Why? I've already asked or said what and given you the what. Why? Why does all this matter? And it simply is this. Because Christ is magnified when his church is healthy and growing. Christ receives all of the glory. Now here's the thing, if our affections aren't for Christ, you will just hear me, and some of you are hearing me this way, as another checklist, 
as another thing to do, as another reason to feel guilty for leaving when you leave church, and that's not the motive at all. When Jesus is, is the center and all your affections center around him, you want all people to be here worshiping him, glorifying Christ in our midst. Why does all of this matter? It's that Jesus receives glory. The more people worshiping Jesus here on earth or here at our church, the more in heaven. Charles Spurgeon said it this way, stop counting unhatched chickens. He's referring to uh, public bragging about numbers and people walking the aisle. He making professions of faith. He says this, lay aside the worldly numbering of people like, you know, we do on Instagram or uh, we do with our mega church hype. Lay that aside. This idle pretense, he says, of certifying in a half minute that which needs the testing of a lifetime is dangerous. But we love to do it, don't we? There's more notches in my belt and in your belt. But are we really concerned with the main thing? Not just counting numbers, but ensuring that people are truly following Jesus and not just a flash in a pan, but over their whole life. That, that's the goal of the church. That's what it looks like to have a green life, a healthy life that's rooted in Jesus. Let us heed these words. Our motivation must be Christ and his glory. That we would grow in grace, 2 Peter 3.18, write that down. We would grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you growing this morning? Are you growing in grace and in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you green and growing? Just a little bit of water like that resurrection plant. By urging us to grow the Bible reminds us that growth is not only desirable, but it is expected. It's not only desirable, but it's expected. The Bible would expect us to grow as Christians. Colossians 1, 5 to 6, write that down. You heard the good news of Jesus. It came to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, the gospel growing deeper and wider in the world. This ought be our prayer. Let this be the very thing that we desire, that Christ would receive more glory and that our affections be on him. And we won't be able to stop the growth we will be growing, and so will our church. How? What? Why? How? Matthew 16, verse 18, Jay referred to, is Jesus. And he says to Peter, he says, Peter, I tell you, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Jesus is referring to Peter and his confession of who Jesus is because on down the road will be the other disciples who share in the very same confession. That's what Jesus is referring to here. He's not calling Peter a, uh, a Roman Catholic priest. That's not what he's doing. He's not ele elevating Peter over the other apostles. As a matter of fact, we will see that Peter, or we already have, is the spokesperson in Acts, but he is sent by the other apostles to Samaria, and he has to give an account to the church in Jerusalem. Peter's not in charge. Jesus is in charge. Jesus is king. And it's this confession of Peter that he's referring to, and Jesus gives that very promise that we can hang on to still today. I will build my church. And that gives me a whole lot of relief as a pastor. I don't know about you, but I just sigh and I think, oh, good. Good, I, I don't have to do it. Whew. 
I thought I had to do it. I thought that's why I went to seminary, you know, get some tools, go, go, go somewhere, grow a church. No. Jesus says, I will build my church. And all I got to do is just be faithful to him and follow Jesus and trust that he will do the work that he wants to do. Jesus speaks about the church, the ecclesia, and here he's pointing to his disciples and he's pointing to what they will become, and we've already seen it in the book of Acts, they will become the faith family, they're the family of faith. Jesus is building his church. It's founded upon the apostles and the prophets. Christ Jesus himself is what we just sang, the cornerstone. But I love the way that one pastor asked the question. You'll see it on the screen. If Jesus is committed to the church, should we be any less committed to it? How is your commitment here to Green Acres Baptist Church? Your local church. Support your local farmer. Support your local church. Remember, there's more to the eye than is seen. The church, the local church, is an extension of heaven. It is the kingdom of God visible here on earth. Do you support your local church? Jesus was committed to the church. Should we be any less committed to it? Jesus will build his church. So it's not all on the pastor to grow the church, right? He's just the under-shepherd. God may use me. A little probing, a little nudging. Come on, come on. But remember, just as Paul wrote in the scriptures to the Corinthian church about this very idea. They, they were prone to worship pastors. You know, they had their favorites, John MacArthur and David Jeremiah and Jeff Vanderstel. They, they had their favorites, just to throw a few names around. Paul warned them against this kind of thinking. I planted the seed, 1 Corinthians 3, 67. I planted, Apollos watered, but God made it grow. Don't you give me any credit, nor yourself. There is no room for boasting when God brings the growth. So neither he plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. How does such growth happen well, ultimately, it's only by the work of God. Colossians 2.19. Christ is the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Amen? So, to not want to grow as Green Acres Baptist Church, is to be unfaithful. A mark of, of a Christian is growth. A mark of a Christian church is growth. So what stands in the way? What stands in the way? Is it our affection for Christ? Is it our lack of commitment? Don't we want to see Christ magnified here? Don't we want to be both faithful and fruitful? This is my prayer for us as Green Acres Baptist Church. And I'll do everything in my power to help lead us. And I want you to pray for me that I would be faithful to Christ and fruitful in the ministry for his glory.
In the 1950s, Clark County, the smallest county in Georgia, was primarily rural. Cotton, corn, wheat, cattle, and dairy farms. But in 1953, Reverend A.W. Green, a businessman and pastor and retired farmer, he moved from Sycamore in South Georgia to Clark County, where he owned a farm with his wife, Laureen Spinks Green. And in June 1955, he purchased two farms known as the Phillips, owned by Paul and Viola Dorsey, who became the charter members here at Green Acres Baptist Church and the Flanagan. This property was located in the eastern of Clark County in an area which was beginning to develop. One day, while moving hay and thinking about his plans to turn his hay field and do uh, adjoining fields for a subdivision, <clears throat> Green Acres, the idea occurred to him to set aside a portion of land for a church. And he felt strongly that a church should be located in each community. And since the nearest Baptist church was approximately five miles away, what better place than for a church to be right here? And so he later deeded portions of four choice lots to this corner, Barnett Shoals and Forest Road. The story goes on that Prince Avenue Baptist Church and First Baptist Athens and First Baptist Winterville and Talmadge Heights Baptist Church and Moon, Moon's Grove Baptist Church out there in Colbert and Calvary Baptist, they all gathered together and a representative from each church said, yes, we agree, we want to support what God's going to do right here. And so they gathered together some money for Reverend A.W. Green so that he could begin to preach. They built a, a pastorium. I think we just moved that thing. And don't you know that they met there and they passed around a hat and they collected $26.50 to start this brand new church. The story goes on. And they met in the Green Acres Development Office as things were getting started and finally could have their first worship service in 1958, which then became the Green Acres Baptist Church. We could go on in the history of the church, talk about the 80s and the 90s, but here we are, 2023. I just want to close with this very thought and question what will the history books write about us and the decisions we're making now and where we're headed our faithfulness to the Lord our fruitfulness to the Lord will it be said of us that we in faith and in hope trusted the Lord and planted seeds even when it was difficult Call it the Great Depression if you want. But we planted seeds because we believed in the Lord. And I'm hoping one day it'll rain. It'll rain. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness to us. And even if we don't grow anymore, you are still good. You have been so good to us, gracious to us. We have seen your mercies, the evidence of your spirit at work here in the life of our church. You have brought us faithful men and women. I mean, rock solid people. Faithful followers of Jesus. Those that have planted seed.
we've seen fruit born. Lord, we don't want to throw in the towel. We still want to be faithful. God, we still want to be fruitful for your glory, not for ours. We don't want shine. We want you to get the glory. Let it be said, we don't know how it happened. I mean, we could point to you a few things, but let it be said of us at Green Acres Baptist Church, God brought the growth. God did the work. It was the work of His Spirit. Nothing we could have ever done on our own. Lord, that is my prayer. Help us to be faithful, every one of us, and fruitful. pray this in Jesus name we're gonna sing and this will be our response church Lord I need you maybe that is you as an individual that's your confession Lord I need you every hour I need you and then we're gonna turn a corner and we're gonna sing Lord we need you Lord we are Green Acres Baptist Church and we need you let that be our confession. Let's stand together and we'll sing.